double session on, uh, on aging and uh, as, um, as it is aging we're talking about, I, I could not actually resist to play a further little variation on a theme uh, we have heard already. Uh, so. And uh, this is where we've, we've heard already uh, at several points that, that uh, Wolfgang is amongst the privileged who, due to their uh, extraordinary education and accumulation of human capital, uh, can expect a, a long uh, life. Uh, now, uh, in fact, um, we have uh, also, we've heard uh, of the work uh, of Maria winkler Dvorak, our uh, esteemed colleague, who's been uh, researching extensively uh, uh, the role of membership in academies for uh, aging. And uh, I, I'm drawing on uh, a picture uh, she, she is typically using in her presentations, and which is courteously uh, 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 borrowed to me. Now, uh, the variation I want to play is, uh, that we can, in fact, view uh, Wolfgang's career not one of kind of successful aging built on human capital, but also one of productive aging. And, and this takes one to a very kind of economic point of view, uh, the one uh, of complementarity, because it is not only true that uh, people who have who are educated for their education and for their continuous accumulation of human capital. They, they uh, experience an extension of their life expectancy, but it also goes the other way around. If you expect to lead a long life, well, how much greater is your incentive to, to push further uh, your work and the accumulation of your human capital even into older years? Uh, Jesus has yesterday hinted at this. And indeed, both is true. It goes both directions. And this is uh, this gentleman, Leopold Viatoris. Uh, he published his last article at the age of 104. So uh, he seems to be a good example of this complementarity. Uh, but well, maybe uh, in a few years down the line, Maria will be able to, to change this picture uh, uh, with Wolfgang's. Uh, so we are thinking of 2016. And uh, what we would hope, of course, is that. He hasn't published his last paper then, then, but is still actively publishing. Now, that said, uh, I uh, note that uh, Johanna is not in the room, so, so I might leave it at this, but uh, really reiterating what uh, Pavel Kabat has uh, said in his introduction, there may be other very productive activities which you could turn to uh, within your family. Dear Wolfgang, Whatever it is you do, uh, live long and prosper. That's my bottom line to this. And now, it's my... Uh, Could I letter. ask a question? Oh. <laughs> this wasn't meant to be a scientific yeah. talk. <laughs> <laughs> he published his last article in 1995. What was he doing for the last seven years of his life? Oh, <laughs> yes, so, so there's scope for further. <laughs> Scope for further <laughs> exploration and pushing the boundary. He was from Innsbruck and he hiked. He was really at the Batschhofer and at the, uh, at the Innsbruck Army, the Tyrolean Alps, he hiked until the age of 100. Good. <laughs> it's not that the articles were retracted. <laughs> Anyway, it's now my pleasure. I, I, I won't say much about the speakers, all of whom are very well known, who are long fellow travellers of Wolfgang's, and it's my pleasure to have Warren uh, to give the first presentation. Thank you. Well, for uh, someone who is almost 60, four days from being 60, uh, it's interesting to ask sort of uh, what we would think about that person. And uh, we know what people used to think about this person. So here is the statement 
from the Vienna International Plan on Aging 1982. And they talk about aging, what's going to happen to social, economic, political, scientific questions that are raised by all these old people who are 60 years of age and over. Some of us may be close to that border now and on the verge of becoming old, at least as considered in uh, 1982. But uh, the UN has uh, thought about this and three decades later, what do we know? Well, the old people are those who are 60 years and over. It's still the case. There's something obviously going on with age 60. You get old. Yeah. Obviously, at least that's what the UN tells us. Now, not all 60-year-olds are the same. And, uh, if we want to analyze sort of what the world looks like from the perspective of a 60-year-old, we need some kind of standard. So we thought about this for a while and thought, why not uh, use the standard of uh, Austrians? Uh, and in particular, Austrians with post-secondary education. So these are going to be the standards for which uh, we're going to use in, uh, in looking at, uh, at the world. Uh, we're going to look at, we're going to use Austrian men as a standard, Austrian women as a standard. So we have this wonderful data set, which is the Wittgenstein Center Data Explorer. We've created cohort life tables based on the information there. And what we do is we compute the chronological ages of people who have the same remaining life expectancy as these people on the verge of getting old. Yeah? Those people in Austria with post-secondary education. And we're going to call these ages <coughs> perspective ages. So here is our story. It's easy, easy enough to, uh, to look at. This is a relation between uh, remaining life expectancy and age, and the upper line is for Austria, for men or for women with post-secondary education. And the lower line is for any particular country or year that we might be interested in. We call this the index country. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at everything from the perspective of 60-year-old Austrians with post-secondary education. So we start at age 60, and then we look at what the remaining life expectancy, the age of people with the same remaining life expectancy, as our 60-year-old Austrians in their life table. Okay. And that's called AP here, perspective age. And actually that lower line is uh, people with lower secondary education in Estonia, if you want to find out. No where that comes from, and that's about 53 and a half. Now, the difference between the two, this AP and 60, is the Austrian advantage. So the Austrians can live about six and a half years after, additional to our Estonians, uh, and get the same life expectancy, okay? So that's the advantage that they have. They have an advantage of about six and a half, six and a half years. So this is what happens if we do this for the world. And it turns out that if we use Austrians with post-secondary education as a standard, they have the same remaining life expectancy as 50-year-olds overall, averaged overall in the world. So the Austrians have a 10-year advantage. They can live 10 years longer 
before their life expectancy declines to the same level. So here are the countries in the world, the 10 most populous countries in the world. And here we see the perspective ages that we, we showed you. And you notice that almost this is now for all educational attainments. And you notice that they're normally quite a bit lower than our uh, Austrian uh, standard folks, except for Japanese women. Right? Japanese women actually have an advantage over Austrian women. But you notice there's some very big gaps here. Look at women in Nigeria, for example. They have a prospective age of about 41. The Austrian vantage there is 19 years. It's gigantic. Now, in addition to uh, those big 10 countries, we took a kind of random sample of some other countries. We have uh, Finland. I heard there's some nice islands there. I've never been to a Finnish island. Uh, we have Mauritius, I heard there are good beaches there, and there either. So we have a bunch of uh, countries which uh, sort of chosen more or less at uh, random as you could tell. Uh, and so here are the prospective ages aggregating over all the educational attainments. And you see that uh, of all these countries, None match our Austrian, none get to 60 and the Austrian standards. Shows how robust the uh, Austrians are with post-secondary education. Now here we're just going to look at the same countries, but now we're going to match the levels of education. So let's look at uh, Russian men, for example. <coughs> Prospective age of Russian men with post-secondary education is 45 years. 15 years disadvantage, not aggregated over all the educational attainments. This is comparing very educated Russian men with very educated Austrian men. Same level of education, 15 years advantage for the Austrian men. Uh, so here again you see the when you compare the same levels of education, the Japanese are better, but everybody else is not as good. And here we have the uh, the same graph now comparing people with the same education uh, for our sort of ra random uh, list of, uh, of countries. So you see that uh, people in, in Mauritius have about a five year disadvantage comparing apples with apples, people with post secondary education uh, in both cases. And uh, it's the Austrians, by the way, do even better than the Finns, which is interesting when you compare the uh, whole education concept and better than the people in Singapore. Now you can look at this in a different way, the same data. This is uh, the Austrian advantage. This is the number of additional years the Austrians get to live before their life expectancy falls to the same level as uh, you see in those countries. And you see some big advantages in Nigeria, in Russia, particularly for men. You see again in Indonesia you have advantages of about 10 years. And uh, here we have uh, our special countries that we're interested in. You see that uh, Finland, the Austrian advantage is very small. You see in South Africa, for men, it's gigantic. 
Now, what I would like to talk about is this graph here. Uh, if we go back, I'm going to go back one. If you look here, you see sort of what the Austrian advantage is for men and for women. Now, the gender gap can be thought about as the difference in that advantage. So, if the Austrian advantage is 10 years for men and for women, the Austrians have a longer life, but the difference between men and women is zero. Now we know that when we look at gender gaps, women tend to live longer than men. But now we are looking at men compared to Austrian men, age 60 with post-secondary education, and women compared to Austrian women, with post age 60 with post-secondary education. So the issue is how far behind they are relative to our 60-year-old Austrian standard people. Uh -huh. Am I going in the wrong direction? And here are the 10 biggest countries. <coughs> and what you see here is in these countries there are only two where women have an advantage. And all the rest, women have a disadvantage. Those are the bars that are below zero. So that's a little bit different from what we think about in terms of gender gap. This gender gap is not a gender gap in which women have an advantage, but women have a, a disadvantage. Women have an advantage in Russia when men do very poorly and also in Japan, but no other of our top 10 big countries in the world do women have an advantage. What is the reason in Japan? Japanese women are the longest living women in the world. But here we have our special country. And you notice here the same sort of pattern. Most of these lines indicate a disadvantage for women, not for men. So here is what we must conclude. If 60-year-olds with post-secondary education in Austria are old, and the average person in the world is equally old in terms of life expectancy at age 50. This is clearly wrong. It can't, you can't be old at, uh, on average at age 50. So we must conclude, therefore, that 60-year-old Austrians with post-secondary education cannot possibly be considered old. <coughs> Happy birthday.